Our second of reading is from Philippians, the third chapter, verses 17 through 21. Join together in following my example, brothers and sisters, and just as you have us as model, keep your eyes on those who live as we do. For I have often told you before, and now tell you again, even with tears, many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction, their God is their stomach, and their glory is in their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things, but our citizenship is in heaven, and we eagerly await a savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his, glorious body. The word of God for the people of God. So our uh, uh, sermon today is entitled Citizenship, it, which is an appropriate sermon, I feel, uh, considering what this weekend is. Uh, of course, tomorrow is 4th of July, Independence Day, and um, it, it's always fun to see uh, fireworks. Anybody else just absolutely adore the fireworks? Um, just love them. And, and of course, we have, uh, if we're lucky, the, the, uh, during Pioneer Days, we have fireworks then as well. Uh, last night, we actually got together with some family and did our fireworks. Uh, anybody else like us that uh, every year you figure out which fireworks were your absolute favorite and you're thinking, We've got, we've got to get those next year. And you write it down and you can never find the list again. Anybody else? Said, we've done that multiple years in a row. Never, ever find the list. Uh, we go and then we're like, I think we got that before. I don't remember if we liked it or not. But, but we've all, I, I think most of us enjoy fireworks. And so this is, this is a, a wonderful weekend to, to get together with family and celebrate. And just to enjoy the time together. And, and I certainly have no problem with being patriotic. I have no problem with, with loving the country that you live in. But I want to share a little story. There was a, a, a couple of kids who were playing church. Uh, you know how kids play and, and they'll do different things. Uh, I, I know um, Eli and, and Micah Rands, uh, they used to play funeral home. Um, <laughs> Uh, and and I, I know of actually a couple of other kiddos that grew up in funeral homes who would play funeral home. But they, these kiddos apparently had uh, uh, some family member that was a pastor. So they were playing church. And as kids do, they, they remember some things. Uh, maybe not always paying attention. But the, the little boy uh, had gone through and he was finishing up the church service. And he finished with, and in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to which the little girl ended with, and the republic for which it stands. <laughs> and we laugh because that's cute. But isn't that actually one of the issues that we have in our country right now? We have something called Christian nationalism, and, and some uh, consider this as, as, as a touchy subject, but I feel like it's appropriate. It, until 1967, until 1967, did you know there was a significant issue that was illegal? Something called dual citizenship. Until 1967, dual citizenship was illegal which meant you couldn't be a citizen of the United States as well as another country. It was illegal. You couldn't do it. It's since been uh, removed from being illegal, but it's discouraged in the United States and unrecognized by the U.S. State Department. Dual citizenship. And the reason I bring this up is because we can't be dual citizens either. We cannot be dual citizens. We have to choose where does our citizenship lie. 
Now, according to scripture that Megan just read, Philippians verse 20, but our citizenship is in heaven. Scripture says that. I'm, I'm not pulling that out. This is, this is what it says. So we need to decide where does our citizenship lie? Because we can't be dual citizens. I'm going to come back to that, but did you know that there is something very special that people who become a citizen of the United States have to recite? It's called the Nationalization Oath of Allegiance to the United States of America. I'm going to, I'm going to recite it to you in case you didn't know what it says, because I'm sure you've all memorized it anyways, but I'm going to go ahead and remind you about it. It says, I hear bear hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty of whom or which I have been heretofore been a citizen or subject, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by law, that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. Do you know what the word allegiance is defined as? Loyalty or commitment of a subordinate to a superior or of an individual to a group or cause. To me, part of what this is saying is we can commit allegiance to one thing. What are we committing allegiance to? Right? And I'm not trying to tell you, okay, this is exactly what you should think, but I'm going to share the information and see what you come up with. Because to me, your citizenship is in heaven. If we take a nationalization oath of allegiance to the United States, we have to renounce all allegiance and fidelity to any sovereignty any sovereignty. What's that tell you? I mean, I'm not wrong, right? And that, that's what it says. Sovereignty. Our sovereign God. I find it very interesting that it ends with, so help me God, when it's basically saying you need to not actually go along with God, though. Go along with us, but we're going to put it under the umbrella of God so it looks good. Now, again, I have no problem with being patriotic. I have no problem with loving the country that you grew up in. I, this is, you know, we have issues, but this is a pretty darn good country. We got a lot of freedoms here. We've like got a lot of good things in this country. So don't get me wrong. Don't say I'm not uh, supporting of our country. I'm not supporting of our, our armed forces. I'm not supporting of our leadership. I'm not supporting of what has happened to get us where we are. I'm not saying that. But I will say we need to decide on our citizenship. Now, if you don't know, my dad was stationed in Italy. And my mom and dad were married, so my mom went with him uh, to Italy. And my sister was born in Italy. And what was interesting is I found this out a few years later um, that when she turned 18, she had to decide her citizenship. She had to decide whether she was going to be an Italian citizen or an American citizen. I, this was not really brought up in our family because my parents basically decided for her. Um, they turned in the information and said, yeah, she's going to be American. But I found out that if for some reason they had chosen Italy or she had, she would have had to have left the country, left her high school immediately and gone back to Italy and joined the military. It would have been required by their law. 
If she had chosen that citizenship, that would have been required. That would have been part of the oath commitment she would have made. She would have had to join the military. And I bring this up because we have to decide our citizenship. Because whatever citizenship we decide on, there are certain requirements that go along with that. Right? There are certain responsibilities. There are certain things that we have to go along with whichever citizenship we decide to be a part of. The problem with this thing called national or Christian nationalism is that some are, are twisting the, the scripture. They're twisting Christ to make him American. Blonde hair, blue eyed, loves baseball and mom's apple pie type of thing. And don't get me wrong, I love apple pie. Baseball's a little boring, but... But that's not who Christ was. He wasn't American, in case you didn't know. He wasn't blonde. He wasn't white. Because how I know that is because Scripture doesn't give a description of him. If he had been a blonde, white guy in this time period, it would have been mentioned. Because he would have stood out. But that's the thing. We need to make sure that we not look, we not twist Christ to how we want him to look, but how he really was. We need to not turn our country into a God. Because that's a problem, isn't it? When we look at Exodus 20, verse 3, you shall have no gods before me. And that's one of the problems. Being honoring to your country, being patriotic is fine. I encourage you to do it. And if you see issues with it, do it in the proper way. So yes, please do that. Treating it as a God, I got a problem with that. Treating it as more important than that nationalism, I got a problem with that. I have here my passport. It's good till 2024. Uh, if you look... Here, I've, I've even got a few stamps on it from some of the places I've been. Uh, this is the second passport I've got. The other one has since expired. But that passport is used to verify one's country of citizenship. By using that to go into different countries, I can go into different countries, but then I can come out of it. And I can come back to this country. I've been vetted. I've been approved by this country. I'm deemed safe. They don't have to double check or triple check on me when I come back into this country. Sometimes they might still do that. But this definitely shortens the wait line. I'm considered a citizen. I'm not a foreigner. I'm not a stranger. I'm one of, I'm one of you all. But see, that passport, eventually, it's going to expire. It expires in two years, 2024. I looked at it last night. And I wonder if it's still good. It expires in 2024. And I have to get a new one. But the citizenship, the passport I get to go to heaven, to become a citizen of heaven, does not expire. It never expires. It goes on for good. The difference is it's not stamped in ink. It's stamped in blood. It's stamped in the blood of Jesus Christ. And when we go to that place, when we go to that country, Ephesians 2.19 you are no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. You see, that's the type of citizenship we need to aim for. You see, this is just a, a, a stop on the way to heaven. Here on earth, even though this is a great place, it's a stop. It's not the final destination. C.S. Lewis said in The Problem of Pain, our Father refreshes us on the journey, that's what this is, with some pleasant inns or hotels. 
but will not encourage us to mistake them for home. That's where we stumble. We mistake this for home. You see, when we're on vacation, we like to get to the nice hotels, don't we? That pamper you and take care of you. And as nice as it is, isn't it so much better to come home? You're ready to come home at the end of the vacation. You're ready to come home, even though you, you got to do all the cleaning. You got to take care of the laundry. You can't, you know, you may leave the suitcases sitting there for a week or so, but eventually you got to empty them out. It's so much better to come home in a place that you're always welcome, always loved. You are not a foreigner. You are not a stranger. You are members of his household. Speaking of C.S. Lewis, uh, the Chronicles of Narnia, I absolutely love the Chronicles of Narnia. I have an old set and I've read the entire series in the proper order that he released them. If you know, you know. And the last book is aptly entitled The Last Battle. And if you don't know, in the uh, Chronicles of Narnia, animals can speak. And one of the characters has passed on, uh, gone into Aslan's land. Jewel the horse says this, I have come home at last. This is my real country. I belong here. This is a land I've been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. See, that's the thing, though. We know it's what we're seeking. We know that it's going to be greater and better than anything we could possibly imagine. We know what that land means, really means to us. We have to understand that this country, a wonderful country that it is, is going to pass away. It's going to end. But we're reminded in Daniel chapter 2, verse 44, which if you didn't know, Revelation and Daniel are both used to foresee the future. Prophetic scripture. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. That's the kingdom that is ready for us. That is the kingdom that we can have a permanent passport to. That is the kingdom that is available to us all. That's the one with a passport stamped in blood. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, let us...